going to continue with a new chapter rotation of rigid body when acted by a force an object may be deformed or vibrate however for most objects these effects are very small thus we may assume the object as a an ideal rigid body that has definite shape which does not change all the particles composing it always stay in fixed position relative to each other this table shows the level of syllabus contents c1 and c2 refer to def define and state c3 refer to application what you will learn this topic is basic quantity which above the rotation of rigid body we call it angular there are five types of angular physics quantities there are first angular displacement second average angular velocity third instantaneous angular velocity or average angular acceleration if instantaneous angular acceleration Now let us look at the angular displacement quantities based on the diagram S equals to R times theta, where theta is so uh, theta equals equals to R S over R, where S length or linear distance R distance from rotation axis. Unit SI for angular displacement is radian. Another unit revolution where one revolution equals to 2 pi radian by convention theta is positive if it is counterclockwise and negative if it is, is clockwise now let us look at angular displacement quantity based on the diagram s equals to r times theta so theta equals to s over r where s if you refer up length or linear distance r refer distance from rotation axis unit si for angular displacement is radian for another unit revolution one revolution equals to 2 pi radian by convention angular displacement is positive if it is counterclockwise and negative if it is clockwise average angular velocity is omega equals to angular displacement over elapsed time where uh, delta t over delta t equals to delta 2 minus delta 1 over e2 minus t1 instantaneous angular velocity is defined as angular velocity at a specified position or at a particular of time omega equals to lim delta, delta theta over delta t or d theta over dt commonly referred as angular velocity at point a or angular velocity at time t average angular acceleration is rich of change of angular velocity of rotating rigid body unit si radian per second it is vector quantity change in angular velocity over elapsed time omega 2 minus omega 10 omega 1 divide t2 over t1 instantaneous angular acceleration is defined as angular acceleration at a specified time position or instant of time Alpha equals to dim delta omega over delta t equals to dw over dt equals to d, d2 d square d square delta over dt square. Now let us look at the relation of parameter equation. First is linear displacement equals to radius of its circular motion from the axis of rotation time angular displacement. Second, 
linear velocity equals to radius of each circular motion from the axis of rotation and angular velocity. So, tangential acceleration equals to radius of each circular motion from the axis of rotation times the angular acceleration or centripetal acceleration equals to radius of each circular motion from the axis of rotation and angular velocity or equals to linear velocity square divide of each circular motion from the axis of rotation now let us see the relation between linear velocity and angular velocity based on the diagram when a rigid body is rotated what rotation is all every particle in the body move in circle as a shown in figure 8.1 point p move in a circle of radius r with the tangential velocity v where its magnitude is given by v equals to ds over dt and s equals to r theta so v equals to r d theta over dt so we get v equals to r omega please pay attention where the direction of the linear tangential velocity always tangent to the circular path and please take note every particle on the body every particle on the rigid body has the same angular speed and it or magnitude of angular velocity but the tangential speed is not the same because the radius of circle is changing depend on the position of the particle okay, next week next we will discuss the relationship between tangential acceleration AT and angular acceleration alpha based on the diagram if the rigid body is gaining the angular speed then the tangential velocity of the particle also increasing those two component of acceleration are occurred as shown in figure 8.2 the component are tangential acceleration AT and centripetal acceleration AC given by dv over dt and v equals to r omega so we get AT equals to r d e omega over dt so equals to r omega but AC equals to v square over r or r omega square or v omega the vector sum of centripetal and tangential acceleration of a particle in a rotating body is resultant in linear acceleration ac given by a equals to at plus ac in vector form and its magnitude is a equals to square root at square plus ac square next topic is equilibrium of uniform rigid body when a rigid body is acted upon, upon by a system of forces a change may be produced in the linear velocity or in the angular velocity of the body under certain condition the body will be in equilibrium the defined top is to R time F. What is the torque? The magnitude of the torque. The magnitude of the torque is defined as the product of the force and its perpendicular distance from the line of action of the force to the point rotation axis or torque equals to FT, where torque equals to magnitude of torque, F equals to magnitude of forces, D equals to perpendicular distance. Moment of so, or moment of the force because of D equals to R and theta, where R is the distance between the pivot, pivot point or rotation axis and the point of application of force. Thus, so equals to FR sin theta or so equals to R time F where theta is angle between F and R torque is a vector quantity the dimension of torque is to the dimension force time dimension distance is to ML squared 
times t power and negative 2. The unit of stock is newton meter. A, ve a vector product unlike the Joule unit of work also equal to newton meter, which is parallel product. Torque is occurred because of turning or twisting effects of the force on a body. Sign convention of torque, positive turning tendency of force is anticlockwise, negative turning tendency of force is clockwise. The value of torque depends on the rotation axis and the magnitude of applied force. Condition of uniform rigid body in equilibrium. Rigid body is defined as a body with definite shape does not change, so that the particle that composes in stay in fixed position relative to one another even though a force is exerted on it. If the rigid body is in equilibrium, means the body is translational, translational, translational and rotational equilibrium. There are two conditions for the equilibrium of forces acting on the rigid body. There are two the conditions of rigid body in equilibrium. First, the vector of all forces acting on a rigid body must be zero. Well, the vector sum f equals to f net equals to zero. Second, the vector sum of all external torques acting on a rigid body must be zero about any rotation axis where the vector sum top equals to top net equals to zero. This ensures rotational equilibrium. It is equivalent to the three independent scalar equation along the direction of coordinate axis. The vector sum of top in x component equals to zero. The vector sum in y common equals to zero, the vector sum up in z common equals to zero. Rotational dynamic. In this chapter, we will define and use the moment of inertia of a uniform rigid body. We will need to state and use torque. What is the moment of inertia? Okay, to understand this concept. Of moment of inertia, I want to show to you a video from my boy YouTube channel, which entitled "Learn to Spin a Book." Okay. So I want to learn how to spin one of these books on my fingertips for 30 seconds in as short a time as possible. I want to see how quickly I can do this. I can spin a basketball on my finger. I learned how to do that in one of the videos earlier on this channel. If you've not seen it, you should definitely go check it out. I think that that skill will translate well to spin in the book, so this one should be easy. Let's give this a go. So I'm thinking relatively thick books with a little bit of give, so the book kind of sags around my finger faster. This is a nice Led Zeppelin songbook. I'm not going to ruin that. Thin and hard. Okay, from the previous video, why the book is difficult to spin compared to the ball? Is it because of the shape of the ball and compared to the book? Or is it because of the mass? Okay, the quick answer for this is it is because of the moment of inertia. Okay? If an object is very difficult to be rotated, then we say the moment of inertia is bigger. So the book, we can say the moment of inertia for the book is bigger or larger compared to this ball. Alright, what is really the moment of inertia? We can define the moment of inertia as the sum of the product of the mass. Okay, We sum the product of the mass of each particle and the square of its respective distance from the rotation axis. Okay? This definition can be simplified in this formula. Okay? The definition said that we can 
uh, calculate the moment of inertia for any object by doing summation or addition of all uh, products of mass and distance square so we need to consider every particle on this book for example let's say this book uh, made up by four only four particle only so we need to consider all four uh, product of mass and r squared so uh, in simplified uh, formula we can write down as moment of initial equal to summation of m multiplied by r squared where i is moment of initial m is mass and r is the distance from particle to rotation axis okay the more of mass the more of the moment of inertia the moment of inertia is similar to the mass in linear kinematic okay the measurement of moment of inertia will determine whether an object is easy or difficult to be rotated it is a scalar quantity which have only magnitude and the dimension of moment of inertia is mass length squared the SI unit is kilogram meter squared the factor which affect the moment of inertia are the first one is the mass of the body which means a heavier object tend to have a bigger moment of inertia okay the second one is the shape of the body okay the more mass spread or distributed far from the center of rotation so we have the bigger moment of inertia okay the last one is the position of rotation axis if the axis is not positioning balance the moment of inertia will be bigger okay the scientists already derived for us the moment of inertia for various body on this table we can have equation for moment of inertia for the first one is cylindrical shell solid shell uniform rod solid sphere and the last one is hollow sphere so we can use this formula this equation to calculate the moment of inertia okay for example the cylindrical shell we just take the formula we put the mass m little m is the mass of this uh, object multiplied by the radius of this cylindrical shell the relationship between torque and angular acceleration consider a force acting a rigid body really pivoted on axis 2.0 as shown in this figure okay let's say a force is given to this object and the body is rotated anti-clockwise in the direction and the net torque is produced okay for example if we want to rotate this object we need to give this object a force f okay let's focus on particle m1 which distance r1 is particle the net force experienced by this particle is f1 equal to m1 a1 a single particle we call this particle m1 so force experienced by this particle is f1 one is from f equal to ma lah okay and a1 is acceleration experienced by particle 1 we can equate to r1 alpha alpha is rotational acceleration of this object so we substitute acceleration and share acceleration with r1 alpha so the torque on mass 1 is torque 1 equal to r1 f1 sine 90 degree so if we calculate sine 90 degree equal to 1 so we substitute f1 into f1 here so we have top 1 equal to m1 r1 squared alpha the total net torque on the rigid body which means we want to calculate the total torque for every particle on this object so we need to substitute every torque on every particle so we have 
simplified formula Torque, total torque equal to total m r squared multiplied by alpha so we know that this formula is equal to moment of inertia so total torque equal to moment of inertia multiplied by alpha which is uh, rotational acceleration okay so from the equation the net torque acting on the rigid body is proportional to body's angular acceleration so this is the previous formula the net torque equal to i alpha then if we refer to our previous lesson total force equal to ma so we we can get, compare this two lah the first one is in rotational motion and the second one is for linear motion conservation of angular momentum in this chapter we need to define the formula of angular momentum and we need to state and use the principle of conservation of angular momentum angular momentum angular momentum we are using the symbol capital L for angular momentum what is angular momentum all right I think you still remember the momentum itself any moving object will have momentum so if any object rotates so the object also have momentum we call this type of momentum as angular momentum angular momentum can be defined as the product of angular velocity of a body and its moment of inertia about the rotation axis okay in the formula we can state angular momentum l as equal to i omega which is i is the moment of inertia multiplied by omega which is angular velocity angular momentum is a vector quantity so it have direction and magnitude its dimension is mass length squared divided by time the si unit of the angular momentum is kilogram meter squared per second to understand the principle of conservation of angular momentum let's watch first a demo by dr boyd edward from basic demos youtube channel this is a hoberman sphere you can expand it and contract it using this string what i'm going to do is to use it to demonstrate the conservation of angular momentum uh, the axis i'm going to rotate it about this vertical axis and and that axis is also denoted by the string that passes vertically through the sphere we will um, note first that the moment of inertia in this con this expanded configuration is much larger than the moment of inertia in this contracted configuration so what we can expect is that if we give it some angular momentum in the expanded high moment of inertia um, configuration and then we contract it its angular speed should increase and sure enough it's one of the most uh, spectacular demonstrations I think of conservation of angular momentum principle of conservation of angular momentum just like the linear momentum in rotation we also have principle of conservation in angular momentum what is this principle it states that the total angular momentum of a system about a rotation axis is constant if no external torque acts on the system okay momentum is constant if the total torque equal to zero or no torque x on the system therefore 
we can write it gain in different way total top equal to zero which means no rate of change of momentum so momentum is constant no change in momentum then we can write all this equation as summation of momentum initial equal to summation of momentum final so if the momentum final equal to momentum initial that means no change in momentum 